In this tutorial, we're going to install Eclipse, JRevel, and we're going to start a project. So we're going to start by going to scala-ied.org slash download slash sdk to download Eclipse. So we'll go to the download section, and I'm going to click on the link for Mac OS X. I've already downloaded Eclipse, but I'm just going to show you here how to download it. Okay, so it'll take a little bit of time to download, but once it's downloaded, you can go and put it in your applications folder, and then put an icon in the dock if you're on a Mac, and then uh, we're going to go to the documentation on how to install the Scala plugin for Eclipse. So here's the page. Um, we're going we're gonna to need an, a web link to install the plug-in for when we start up Eclipse, and that is going to be on this next page right here. Yeah, right here, we're going to use the Scala 2.12.2 link, so I'll copy that. Okay, so we'll fire up Eclipse. I've edited this video so that anything that takes a long time, I've, I've sort of cut that bit out. So Scala wouldn't, uh, Eclipse won't start up so fast or load things so fast. As, is done, as appears to be done in this video. Okay, so here you have to set your workspace when you open Eclipse for the first time. And so just create a folder somewhere on your file system, preferably not in your applications folder. Okay, I created a directory called workspace in a folder under my home directory. and then just click OK. Okay, so now to install the Scala plugin, you should go to uh, Help and Install Software. Install new software. So click Add. Give it a name if you want to. I don't think it's actually necessary. And then after you've typed in a name, click on the location and paste the link that you copied earlier. Okay. Go ahead and click Scala IDE for Eclipse. And then I think that's the only one you really need. I went ahead and, and added the Scala IDE plugins. It's not necessary though. Okay, then go ahead and click proceed. Click next. Again, this will probably be a lot slower for you. I've edited the video to make, make it go faster. Accept the license agreement and click finish. Now we're going to figure out how to install JRebel. JRebel is useful for uh, not having to stop and restart the server so often. So yeah, just go to zero turnaround. There's a link slash software slash JRebel slash download. And all you really need there is this link for installing the software just into Eclipse, just like you got for um, installing the Scala, the Scala plugin. Okay, so right there I just set the workspace permanently so it doesn't keep asking me for the workspace. Again, go to Help, Install New Software. And when the prompt appears, uh, just paste in the link. Click Add. This is the JRebel link that you just copied. Click Add. Don't have to give it a name. I didn't, so go ahead. Click OK. And select select the top one, JRebel for Eclipse 3.3 Plus. And then click Next. And accept the license agreement. And yeah, go ahead and restart uh, Eclipse. Okay, so now we're going to download uh, the Lyft framework. So go to liftweb.net. And 
then you're going to need a place to download it too. So I've made a folder called Lyft Projects, and in there I'll put all my Lyft projects. So when I download Lyft, it goes to my... Um, when I will download it, it will go down my downloads directory. I'll just copy it over. So where's the tag? Where's the link to download it? Well, it's up at the top, actually, right in front of me. Yeah. Click Download. And go ahead and download the latest. I use the zip. Okay, so back to my terminal. I'm going to move that file that I just downloaded, the lift framework, into my lift projects directory. I don't have it. Don't have my alias set up, so I'm just type it the long way. Or maybe I'll just load my profile so that my alias for the LL comes up. So there's the lib framework, it's all zipped up. Let's unzip the file. Okay. And now I'm gonna rename it to I don't know my project repo. I'll put underscore repo at the end to indicate that it's the repository for the project. And then we'll go one level further under Scala 211. This is where the various folders reside for, for the framework. Okay, so Advanced uses a Twitter Bootstrap CSS framework. Uh, basic does not. It uses uh, some other style. I think it's Foundation or something. But we're going to remove all those other ones. Basic, Blank, JSON, and MVC, and we're just going to keep Lift Advanced Bootstrap 3 because I'm going to use the Bootstrap for this and subsequent tutorials. Okay, and let's rename this directory Lift Advanced Bootstrap 3 to something else. We can, we'll rename it in a bit. Ah, okay. So I'm going to actually add the license file to JRebel. You can do it uh, yourself, but I've cut that out so nobody can see my license file. Okay. So I made a typo here, but I'll fix that soon. It shouldn't be RM, it should be MV. Glad to didn't actually remove anything. my project. Okay, I'm going to let's actually instead uh, open up Sublime Text. We're going to edit some files, the build.svt file and then the svt file itself. The build svt file uh, allows you to specify uh, the libraries that you're going to use. I don't know if I'm using the right word. Uh, the things that you're going to use that need to be downloaded. Right? So first in Sublime Text, I'm going to open up uh, the project directory, the project repository, and I'm going to go into the project directory and I'm going to edit the build.svt file. There's the svt file also. Um, we'll edit that later. Okay. JRibble needs a setting uh, scan directories uh, full colon uh, equals nil. That's just for JRebel, so it'll do its thing. Okay, so Lyft Mapper. Mapper is the ORM framework that comes with Lyft, but we're going to use Squirrel Record. Um, the reason is that it has some advantages. The, uh, the queries are checked at compile time. It seems like more people are using record than mapper. That might not be true, but that's the impression I get from talking to some other lifters. Okay, we'll add uh, the Postgres dependency because uh, later on we'll use the Postgres database. Just 
Postgres, PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL, and then I'm going to add some sort of version information. I'm running Postgres 9.3, I think, but this 9.1-901 is, is it, it works. Don't forget to add the comma at the end. One more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the port on which the website is served locally to 9096. You can actually set this in SPT after you start SPT. But instead of having to do it each time, I'll just set it here. So when, when I load the page, it'll local post uh, colon 9096. Everyone wants to use 8080. I think 8080 is the default, but that tends to conflict with some other stuff that people run. So that's how I make this change. Okay, now that that's done, I'm in the SVT file here. And I have to set some flags for JREL to work. So the D file encoding equals UTF-8. I'm probably the clumsiest typer on YouTube. See what else do I need? I don't have to put dash server dash no verify. I'll have to speci specify the Java agent, which will be the location to the JRebel jar file. Uh, I'll also have to put in a setting for the lift plugin, so D dash, capital D, lowercase rebel dot lift underscore plugin equals true. Server, no verify. the Java agent, I need to find the location where JRebel, where the installation of JRebel put the JRebel.jar file when I uh, installed it in Eclipse. So I know it's somewhere in the application folder, so I'm going to go look for it. Okay, looks like it's that second line. So I'll copy that. Yep. And let's list it. And we see that the JRebel jar file is there. So, good. Let's go back to Sublime Text and specify that. And so I've pasted the location that you can see, and I've mistyped. So SBT is actually not going to work when I try to run it. But I'll, I'll figure that out and then correct it, you'll see in less than a minute or so. So here's the error, and the error results because I put a dot instead of a slash, as you can see. So go back and then run SBT again. And now the first time you run SBT, it's going to take some time, maybe 10 minutes or so, to download a whole bunch of files. So here you can see that JRebel is working. Now it's downloading a whole bunch of things. I've edited the video to, to cut out all that all that waiting time. So now, now let's start the server. Okay, and then I'm going to, do, I'm going to take a tool to compile to continuously compile the code in case I make changes. That way I don't just stop with JRebel. It'll uh, pick it up and then I don't have to keep stopping and starting the container. So I'm going to go to a browser localhost for 9096, which is what I specified in the build.spt file, and you can see the project is running. So let's uh, let's sign up a user. Okay, I can put my name, but actually, you know what? Instead of putting my name, I'll just put some sort of user. Okay, I'm using two letters for the first name, two letters for the last name, because the validation that comes with the user model requires that first name and last name each be at least two characters long. So I'll click sign up. I've got email verification as some 
skip, so that it doesn't require any email verification, but that can be changed. We might look at that later on. And so I can log in and log out, and there you have it. Now, what about Eclipse? How do we load this project into Eclipse? Okay, well, we'll do that just now, actually. I forgot I should have done it while starting up uh, an SPT, but it's not too late. Okay, so we'll go back to terminal, and I'm going to type in eclipse space with dash source equals true, and then SPT will just download whatever it needs to uh, to have the, to let Eclipse load the project. Now I've got this warning message. I just do repeat the same command. I don't know does that work or not. I just tried it. And okay, so let's go to Eclipse. Right click import and select general existing projects into workspace and then select the project I'm not going to select the repository level I'm just going to select the project level so find that directory all files list projects my project repository and Scale of 211, it's called My Project, so click on that, open it up, and finish. Okay, so it looks like it has loaded the project. Now, there are some advantages to using Eclipse over Sublime Text, even though I love Sublime Text. Um, with Eclipse, you can hover over a value and it'll tell you the type of the value that it is. So for example, if you hover over, I don't know, date, you can see that the type that it is, date, it's a box and something in there. A howdy, that'll give you the type. And if you want to go to the source code of some method, you just put your cursor over it um, and type function F3 and as you can see, it took you to the source. Uh, how, you can see how a class is defined just by putting the cursor there and typing function F3. And there are other things you can do with Eclipse, which makes it useful. Okay, so now let's do some Git stuff. And I'm going to have a bit of a brain cramp here, but I'll get it right in the end. So let's see the into the into the repository. Project repo cd my tab for tab completion and then status I've initialized a git repository so let's just git init and then status I should add all those lift comes with a git ignore file which is pretty good already it captures every, pretty much everything we need although I should add SBT to it because SBT is going to be different for different, different projects depending on where the location of the JREBEL jar is. Now really I should commit first and tag because you can't really tag when you don't have any commits. So here's my brain cramp. Um, just get over with. Okay, so let's do our initial commit.